Hare Krishna. <coughs> Please sir, I'm Lobe Sensor, Lois Prabhupada. So we will uh, resume our discussion on the 11th chapter from uh, uh, verse 14. Tata sa vish maya vish to hrishtaroma dhananjaya pranamya shira sa devam kratanjali rabhashata. Thus bewildered and astonished, his hair standing on end, Arjun bowed his head to offer obeisances and with folded hands began to pray to the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> so the previous six verses had described what Arjun saw. And now we will see Arjun's reaction. <clears throat> so uh, uh, Sanjay, he describes the situation of Arjun using very apt adjectives. So he says that he is bewildered and astonished and his hair is standing at an end. Rishta Roma. So actually hair standing at an end is also a symptom of Bhava Bhakti. When one is at a, at a very advanced stage of devotion, then one of the symptoms is hair standing on an end. But in Arjun's case, it was not that. It was coming from his Vishmaya Avishtha. So Vishmaya Avishtha means that his state of wonderment. And Sanjay says that he describes Arjun as Dhananjaya. So Arjun is described as Dhananjaya because he is the conqueror of wealth. Which also means that Arjun by nature is very sober, calm and collected. But despite having that disposition, the effect of this wondrous form is that it overcomes Arjun with astonishment. Vishmaya Avishta. Now this is the <coughs> second time in the Bhagavad Gita where we see what is known as Rasa Sandhi. So Rasa is the mellow of the relationship between a devotee and the, and the Lord. So earlier on we noticed uh, in the seventh verse when Arjun accepts Krishna as his guru then uh, his relationship with Krishna changes from Sakya to Vatsalya, from uh, friendship to parenthood. Guru is considered to be equivalent to a parent. So that was one uh, example of Rasa Sandhi. Now we see that Arjun's mood is turning from Vatsalya to Adbhut, to astonishment. Now uh, this astonishment is that of wonderment. It is not that of fear. That will happen later on when Arjun sees Krishna's Kal Rupa. Okay, let's go to the next verse. <coughs> verse 15. Arjun Vacha Pashami Devam Stavadeva Dehe Arjun said, My dear Lord Krishna, I see assembled in your body all the demigods and various other living entities. I see Brahma sitting on the lotus flower as well as Lord Shiva and all the sages and divine serpents. <clears throat> so now Arjun is describing what he sees. In seven verses, we will see Arjun's description of the universal form. So he sees Brahma. So Brahma is situated at the highest point of the universe on the lotus flower. And then he sees Vasuki. So Vasuki is there in the in the lowest of the planetary system he's there in the in 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 the lower planetary system and even below vasuki supporting the whole uh, universe is garbhadakshay vishnu so arjun is saying that i am seeing from the highest point to the lowest point in the universe that means he is seeing everything from the beginning to the end, sitting at one place in the chariot. Prabhupada says that is only possible by the grace of Krishna. 
नेक्स्ट वर्स वर्स सिक्सटीन अनेक बाहो दर वक्त्र नेत्र पशा ताम सर्वतोनूपम ना न मध्यम न पुनस्वादी पशा विश्वेश्वर विश्व ओ लॉर्ड द यूनिवर्स ओ यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म आई सी इन योर बॉडी मेनी मेनी आर्म्स बेलीज माउथ्स एंड आईज एक्सपैंडेड एवरीवेयर विदाउट लिमिट आई सी ए न्यू नो एंड नो बिगिनिंग नो मिडल एंड नो बिगिनिंग सो हियर वी सी अर्जुन explicitly addressing krishna as vishwarupa so this is krishna's universal form he also addresses krishna as vishwa ishwara the lord of the universe so this is referring to krishna's purusha avatar and once again the focus here is very similar to what sanjay was describing aneka that he is seeing many many of many things many arms many bellies many mouths many eyes and without limit so many does not mean many hundred many thousand but many means many unlimited next verse verse 17 kirtanam gadinam chakranam cha तेजो राशि सर्वतो दीप्तिमत पशा ताम लो निरीक्षय समता दीप्तालर्काुतिम अपरेम युअर फॉर्म इज डिफिकल्ट टू सी बिकॉज ऑफ इज ग्लेरिंग इफॉल्चन्स स्प्रेडिंग ऑन ऑल साइड्स लाइक ब्लेजिंग फायर और द इमेजरेबल रेडियंस ऑफ द सन yet i see this glowing form everywhere adorned with various crowns clubs and discs so once again this is very similar to what sanjay had said when he was comparing it with the thousand suns appearing in the sun at the same time so arjun is describing the glaring effulgence of the form and here he also compares it with the immeasurable radiance of the sun or the blazing fire he also makes an important point here first he says that your form is difficult to see and then he says yet i see this glazing from everywhere so this points to the to the empowerment by krishna the point that arjun is saying making is that on my own or on anybody's own effort it is impossible to see beyond the glaring effulgence but because i have received your mercy because i have you have endowed me with mystic eyes i am now able to see this form of krishna and he says that it is adorned with crowns clubs and discs okay next verse verse 18 tvam aksharam paramam veditavyam tvamasya vishvasya param nidanam शाश्वतधर्मगोप्ता सनातनस्व पुरुषो मतोमी यो द सुप्रीम प्राइमल ऑब्जेक्टिव यो द अल्टिमेट रेस्टिंग प्लेस ऑफ ऑल दिस यूनिवर्स यू आर इनएक्सॉस्टेबल एंड यू आर द ओल्डेस्ट यू आर द मेंटेनर ऑफ इथर्नल रिलीजन द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड दिस इज माई ओपिनियन So Arjun says, "Matu me." This is my opinion, but it's not a whimsical opinion. So sometimes when people talk about religion, they say, I, "Religion is what I feel it should be." This is my opinion that God sometimes exists, sometimes not exists. My opinion. So Arjun is not expressing his opinion in that whimsical way. So that's why the antecedents, the previous previous verses are. important to consider in the context that uh, uh, arjun had in very precise terms described the position of krishna and krishna had bestowed his mercy on arjun so when the jiva attempts to understand the lord and the lord bestows his mercy then the jiva begins to understand the lord 
so at that point the opinion of the of the devotee is a fact so when when arjun is saying matami then it is a fact that is based on the teachings of krishna that he has imbibed the mercy of krishna that he has that he has imbibed so here is describing the other aspects of krishna's universal form that you are the supreme primal objective the ultimate resting place vidittavyam so vidittavyam means that you are to be understood how is krishna understood from the vedas and each of the attribute that arjun is uh, uh, describing are also explained in the vedas specifically in the upanishads in a more exhaustive commentary on this verse the uh, acharyas they actually will give reference to which uh, aspect of the uh, of the vedas substantiate these points that are being made by arjun okay let's move on to the next verse <clears throat> verse 19 अनादि मध्यातमीर अनंतु शशि सूर्यनेत्र पशा दीप्तुताशवक् स्वतेजस विश्वद तपंत यू आर विदउट ओरिजिन मिडल और एंड योर ग्लोरी इज अनलिमिटेड यू हेव नंबरलेस आर्म्स एंड द सन एंड द मून आर योर आईज I see you with blazing fire coming forth from your mouth burning this entire universe by your radiance. So we also see some repetition over here the numberless arms uh, the fulgence the blazing fire and Shri Prabhupada explains that uh, repetition is not a fault over here that uh, uh, when one is under under uh, strong emotions then it is customary for the person to repeat if a person is feeling intense love then the person may repeat over and over again i love you so much i like you so much i love you so much similarly if the person is under anger the person might repeat the same thing so here arjun is under is under astonishment seeing this wondrous forms so the same thing which is to a great extent indescribable indescribable he is trying to describe using different analogies and annotations okay next verse verse 20 devya <coughs> sorry dyava prithivyo ridam antaram hi व्याप्तम तव केश दिशा दृष्ट्वाद्भुत रूपमुग्रम तवेद लोकत्र प्रवयथि तम महात्म ऑल दो यूर वन यूर स्प्रेड थ्रू आउट द स्काय एंड द प्लैनेट्स एंड ऑल द स्पेस बिटवीन ओ ग्रेट वन सींग दिस वंडरस एंड टेरेबल फॉर्म ऑल द प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम्स आर प्रिट so now that uh, arjun has become qualified by seeing the vishwarupa krishna is revealing his kal rupa so in 10 verses arjun will describe krishna's kal rupa right so in here he is describing both so he says that you are spread throughout the sky and the planets and the space in between so this is the description of the vishwarupa but uh, uh, it was already established that the vishwarupa was invoking astonishment not fear but what arjun says is seeing this wondrous and terrible form the planetary systems are perturbed so the terrible form is the kal rupa the form through which krishna is destroying and the wondrous form is the vishwarupa by which the whole universe is manifested now it we can also understand that arjun was not the only person seeing the form of krishna's krishna so the acharyas say that when the battle of mahabharat was being fought then it was 
it was such a momentous battle, especially because of the presence of Krishna, that all the celestial beings had also congregated in the sky to observe the battle. The Devas, the Asuras, the Gandharvas, the Kinaras, those who were friendly, those who were inimical or neutral, they had all gathered. And not only did Krishna give Arjun the celestial eyes, he also gave all of them the celestial eyes by which they could see the form. So Srila Prabhupada in the purport says that that Dhyava Prithvayo, the space between heaven and earth, and Lokatrayam, the three worlds are significant words in this verse because it appears that not only did Arjun see the universal form of the Lord, but others in other planetary systems saw it also. Arjun's seeing of the universal form was not a dream. So this is the reason why Krishna bestowed the vision on others. Because if Arjun was the only one who saw it, one may find the fault in Arjun. That it was only a product of Arjun's imagination. So here we see that all, all that the Lord had endured the divine vision, they all were able to see the universal form. Next verse. <clears throat> verse 21. Amehi twam sura sanga vishanti ke chir bihe taha prananjala yogananti swaste teoktva maharishi siddha sangaha all the host of demigods are surrendering before you and entering into you. Some of them are very much afraid, are offering prayers with folded hands. Host of great sages and perfected beings crying, all peace are praying to you by singing the Vedic hymns. So Arjun is now describing the the reactions of others on seeing Krishna's form. So some, some of them are saying, please protect us. So which means that Krishna is the shelter. Twa Vishanti. He is the shelter of the Devas. And the great Siddhas and the sages, they are saying that, let there be peace. Swasti iti, swasti iti. So, uh, all of them are, are praying to you by singing the Vedic hymns. So, it is said that one can pray to Krishna in different ways. One can pray to Krishna according to the hymns in the Vedas, like by reciting the Pusha Shukta or the Brahma Samhita or, or the Bhagavad Gita, the Narayan Kavach. So, these are all prayers that are given in the in the uh, uh, Vedas or corollary uh, uh, texts, then one can also pray to Krishna following the realization of other great devotees. So we see prayers composed by the six Goswamis, by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, by Srila Prabhupada, and one can pray, repeat those prayers, or one can spontaneously play by words that they have composed themselves. So these are all authorized forms of prayers. Okay, next verse. Verse 22. Rudra Ditya Vasavo Yechasadhya Vishwe Svanao Maruta Sakojma Pascha Gandharva Yaksha Sura Siddha Sangha Vikshante Tvam Vishamatas Cheva Sarve All the various manifestations of Lord Shiva, the Adityas, the Vasus, the Sadhyas, the Vishwadevas, the two Ashvis, the Maruts, the forefathers, the Gandharvas, the Yakshas, the Asuras and the perfected demigods are beholding you in wonder. So earlier on we had seen that Arjun was seeing all these devas in the Vishwaroop of Krishna. He said how he saw Brahma and Shiva and the Ashvis and the various uh, uh, demigods. Now he is seeing them render prayers to the 
kal roop of krishna next verse verse 23 roopam mahate bahuvatra netram mahabhao bahu bahu roopadam bahutram bahudam strakaralam drashtva lokah pravaya tithas tatham o mighty armed one all the planets with the demigods are disturbed at seeing your great form with its many faces eyes arms thighs legs and bellies and your many terrible teeth and as they are disturbed so am i so we see the uh uh, uh Uh, so this verse concludes the description of the agitation experienced in the three worlds on seeing krishna's kal roop so uh, the form is karalam it's ferocious with many tears with many teeth and the last phrase tataham tataham is now arjun uh, expressing his own change of mood he said just like they are disturbed so am i so we now see the second rasa sandhi happening from adbhut to fear over over here and krish and arjun will expand upon his mood of fear in the next set of verses okay verse 24 nabha sparsham diptam anek varnam व्यातानं दीप विशाल नेत्रं दृष्ट्वा हितवां प्रथवयते आंतरात्मा धृतुं न विंदामि समं च विष्णु ओ ऑल प्रिवेरिंग विष्णु सीइंग यू विद योर मेनी रेडिएंट कलर्स टचिंग द स्काई योर गेपिंग माउथ एंड योर ग्रेट ग्लोइंग आईज माय माइंड इज परटर्ब्ड बाय फियर i can no longer maintain my steadiness or equilibrium of mind so arjun is now describing his pitiful state on witnessing krishna's destructive form so he says he is seeing his gaping mouths touching the touching the sky his great glowing eyes so uh, this particular rasa so so far it was adbhut rasa this particular rasa that uh, arjun is uh, witnessing is technically known as bibhasta so it translates to ghastliness it's a little different from fear it uh, includes fear but there is also distaste there is also amazement wonderment um, uh, strong aversion so all those are combined in that in this in this rasa of bibhasta so we see that rasa of adbhut which was pure wonderment now turning to ghastliness and arjun will in two verses describe his pitiful state to set the stage for his second request to krishna which is that please withdraw this form of yours next verse okay verse 25 दंस्त्रकलाते मुखा दृष्टे कालासा दिशो न जाने नलभे च शर्मा प्रसीद द्वेष जगन्वाशा ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ लॉर्ड्स ओ रेफ्यूज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड्स प्लीज बी ग्रेशियस टू मी I cannot keep my balance seeing thus your blazing death like faces and awful teeth in all directions I am bewildered so this is arjun continuing to describe his pitiful state he says that i cannot recognize the directions and Uh, sharma means that i am unable to find any any uh, uh, comfort so uh, uh, arjun is now is now building upon this 
this uh, 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 sense or conveying the sense of unease, extreme unease, ghoram, of extreme fear that Krishna's Kal Rupa is invoking in him. Next verse. Verses 26-27 Ami chatva dhartarashtrasya putraha sarve sahivavanipala sangai vishmodrona sutaputrastathasau saha samadhiye rapiyodha mukhyai Vaktranite Tavaramana Vishanti Damstra Karalani Bhayana Kanani Keched Vilagna Dashanantareshu Sandrashyante Churnite Ruta Maganahe all the sons of Dhritarashtra, along with the light kings and Bhishma, Drona, Karna and our chief soldiers also are rushing into your fearful mouths. And some I see trapped with heads smashed between your teeth. So in the previous set of verses, Arjun was describing his pitiful state, specifically his state of, of extreme fear to the point of ghastliness. Now he is explaining why. Why is it that I am so terrified of this form? So in the five verses that follow from 26 to 30, Krishna, Krishna's Kala Roop will be described by Arjun. So he sees all the sons of Dhritarashtra the hundred Kauravas, then Avani Pala, that along with the, with the kings that were gathered, kings like Shalya and Jaidrat. Arjun refers to Karna as Asau Sutta Putra. And Acharyas say that this also, this refers to the mutual enmity between Arjun and Karna. So Asutta Putra is the son of a charioter. So even at this time, Arjun is, is addressing Karna with a very derogatory term. And he also refers to, it also refers to Karna's enmity with, with Arjun. <clears throat> so um, uh, entering into the mouth of the Kal Roop are the, are the Kauravas, the, the great kings, and even the soldiers and the kings on the side of the Pandavas, they're all being consumed by the Kal Rupa. Okay, verse 28. Yathanadinam bahovom buvedaha samodrameva bimukaha dravanti Tathatavami naraloka vira vishanti vaktranya abhivejvalanti. As the many waves of rivers flow into the oceans, so do all these warriors enter blazing into your mouth. So the analogy here, Arjun will use two analogies, one in this and one in the next verse. This verse talks about the rivers drawn into the ocean. So the rivers do not have a choice. They are forcibly drawn into the ocean. So similarly, Arjun is saying that all these kings and soldiers that he is seeing are forcibly being drawn to their death. Next verse, <clears throat> verse 29. Yatha pradiptam jwalanam patanga vishanti nashaya samarad vega tathevanashaya vishanti lokas 
तवापि वक्त्राने समरद वेगा आई सी ऑल पीपल रशिंग फुल स्पीड इन टू योर माउथ्स एज मॉथ्स डैश टू डिस्ट्रक्शन इन अ ब्लेजिंग फायर सो दिस इज द सेकेंड एनालॉजी दैट अर्जुन यूजेज द प्रीवियस वॉज दैट ही सीज दैम एज रिवर्स गोइंग इन टू एन ओशन and this is as moths dashing into a blazing fire and the difference between the two is that uh the rivers are forcibly drawn into the ocean whereas the moths enter the fire on their own and this essentially differentiates between the two kinds of people that meet their death there are those who do not accept krishna and they are forcibly drawn into death unknowingly and resisting uh, without understanding but death nevertheless draws them in and then there are those who accept krishna they accept that death is inevitable they accept krishna in some form maybe not in pure devotional but they accept krishna in some form and they enter into their into their final moments or into death understanding the position that they are in next verse verse 30 lele se grasamana samantal lokan samagran vadane jwalad bihi tejo birapurya jagat samagram bhasha tavo graha pratapanti vishnu O oh, Vishnu I see you devouring all people from all sides with your flaming mouths covering all the universe with your fulgence your manifest with terrible scorching rays So one may ask that other than is there any escape for those that are either going into Krishna's mouth as moths into a flame or who are being drawn into krishna's mouth like rivers into the ocean is there is there anybody that is able to escape and arjun says no right he says that i see you devouring all people from all sides so many times people think that they can cheat death by doing this or that the asuras they perform austerities and they try to get benedictions but at the end of the day they are devout so arjun is making this point based on what he is seeing that you covered the universe there is no escaping your terrible scorching rays next verse <clears throat> verse 31 akhyami me ko bhavan ukra roopo namostute deva vara prasida विज्ञातमिच्छामि भवन्तमाद्यम् नहि प्रजानामि तव प्रवृत्तम् ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ लॉज सो फियर्स ऑफ फॉर्म प्लीज टेल मी हु यू आर आई ऑफर माय बेसिस ऑन टू यू प्लीज बी ग्रेशियस टू मी यू आर द प्राइमल लॉर्ड आई वांट टू नो अबाउट यू फॉर आई डू नॉट नो what your mission is <clears throat> so we see uh, the influence of uh, this uh, bewildering sight on arjun that arjun uh, he began this chapter by glorifying krishna or rather his understanding of krishna based on all that was spoken to him but now seeing krishna in this destructive form he is once again inquiring to acharya says that not because he has forgotten but in order to strengthen his knowledge of the matter so krishna is infinite and nobody can ever claim to know krishna completely So now that Arjun is seeing forms of Krishna that he had not seen before he is inquiring to get more understanding so he says that that you of this ferocious form 
Devavra. Devavra says best of the Devas, the best deities. He says, please tell me, Vigyantu, tell me the purpose. But again we see the mood in which Arjun is inquiring. He says that, I offer my obeisances unto you. Please be gracious to me. You are the primal Lord. So that inquiry is accompanied with a lot of humility and glorification. He is glorifying the Lord and he is, he is humbling himself before the Lord and that makes him qualified to receive the knowledge. So uh, Arjun is essentially asking him uh, two questions, who you are and what is your purpose? And Krishna will answer these two in the next verse. Verse 32 Sri Bhagavan Vacha Kalasmi Lokaksha Krit Pravarato Lokan Samartam Miha Pravrataha Rate Pitvam Navavishanti Sarve Yevas Tetaha Pratyanik the Supreme Personality of God had said, Time I am, the great destroyer of the worlds, and I have come here to destroy all people, with the exception of you, the Pandavas, and all the, uh, all, with the exception of you, the Pandavas, all the soldiers here on both sides will be slain. So this verse was actually also made. Uh, famous uh, uh, in in another context. Uh, um, Srila Prabhupada is also one of uh, the, the Kalu Asmi portion of this is one of Srila Prabhupada's uh, often rep uh, repeated quote and he talks about Krishna as the um, personification of, uh, uh, of death. And the phrase uh, Kalu Asmi was also repeated by the famous scientist by the name of Oppenheimer, a German scientist who was also a Sanskrit scholar and uh, an avid reader of Bhagavad Gita. So when he witnessed the first nuclear explosion, then he was uh, uh, shocked by the devastating power. At that time, he repeats this verse, Kalu Asmi, Krishna, uh, Krishna is the destroyer. So in three verses, 32 to 34, Krishna will talk about his Kal Rup and he will urge Arjun to willfully surrender unto him as a devotee, not forcibly as a river or a moth. So a river is forcibly surrendering and a moth is compelled to surrender. But uh, Krishna is asking Arjun to voluntarily surrender. So Arjun in the previous verse had asked two questions, who are you and what is your mission? So Krishna responds saying that I am time, Kalu Asmi. And in response to what is your mission, Krishna says that my mission is to destroy everyone with the exception of the Pandavas, actually a few other soldiers. In the Mahabharata, it is revealed that only 10 warriors survived the battle. There were actually millions of warriors over there. Only 10 warriors in Krishna, of course, but Krishna was technically not fighting. So of the 10 warriors, uh, there are the five Pandavas, Satyaki and Yuyutsu. So these were on the side of the Pandavas. So eight were on the side of, uh, seven were on the side of uh, uh, Pandavas. And on the Kaurava's side, there was Ashwatthama, Kripacharya and Kritavarma. <clears throat> so other than that, everybody else was destroyed. Just the seven on the side of the Pandavas, the five Pandavas, Sattaki and Yuyutsu, and the three on the side of Kauravas, Ashwatthama, Kripacharya and Kritavarma. Ashwatthama and Kripacharya are actually Charanjeevis in the sense that they are long lived. Both of them are still alive. Okay, so we will continue with the next verses in our next discussion. Thank you. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.